Hi everyone, it's me again. This is my new video about my Lego suspension systems. First, this is my torsion bar suspension system. You may recognize this design from my first video because, well, it is the first design I made. You can recognize this. This is the regular bottom of the uh, chassis for the torsion bar suspension system. Now I have put on this smaller flat uh, Lego plate on it. This is just actually not a Lego plate. This is actually some sort of fake Lego that I found somewhere. It's a very s smooth suspension system. It allows good handling on surfaces. As you can see, it's quite soft in terms of stiffness. So, that's it for this suspension system. And this is my Lego Umatic suspension system. It's stronger than the previous torsion bar system. And this is a swing axle type. So this is good for sports cars and fast moving vehicles because the suspension will resist sort of uh twisting and causing lots of body roll. See it's pneumatic with two large Lego pneumatic cylinders and one pneumatic pump. This is the valve for it. It's a very simple pneumatic wiring hose idea. So the black hose it connects up to the pump, which is right here. As you can see. And the blue hoses connect to the cylinders, which are these two yellow things. Now here it is in action. This if you push the switch this way, it will come out of here, making the suspension go down. And if it goes that way, it'll put air into the cylinder to make it go up. So now here it is. You can see it now it goes up. Go up a little more. It can go up until about this much. A little more. And the only reason why it doesn't stop right here is because if you went any further, that your tires will be rubbing a lot against this frame. But you can easily fix this by making the wheels like farther out. Overall, this is a strong suspension system. It's easy to build and it's quite versatile. It's lightweight and it can be adapted for most vehicles that you can build right now and now this is the simplest type of suspension you can get it is the perpendicular worm drive type suspension it is a regular perpendicular type suspension it has two bars one of them is connect the wheels to the frame which is this one which is the top one and here are th these three connectors that are holding the drive axle on and here you have this part which is the frame of the vehicle this is the drive shaft that turns the worm gear here
and that would drive a small eight tooth gear that's connected to these two wheels. This is good for motors that need some gear reduction and good for rock rollers. But then with this design, if you decide to use it for an off-road vehicle, in my opinion, I think you might want to get some extra bracing on this axle because if your wheels get stuck in this position and the motor keeps going, the axle is going to start bending quite a bit and eventually it's going to be strong enough to pull the axle assembly and the wheels off. So then maybe you should have a uh, 5 L beam going across connected by a few pegs to the sides. This setup can definitely hold some bigger wheels. These are uh, some regular sized Lego Technic wheels. They look big in this video, but truth is they're only actually five centimeters uh, tall when measured. And now this is my independent suspension setup. As you may recognize, this thing is from the skid steer chassis, which I have built in another video. You can see, you can turn like that. This one is built with independent suspension. It's Tetra type, because it has single uh, pivot suspension arms. Go up like that. You can make this setup wider and softer if you used some uh, L-shaped beams to extend it. And then that will also provide some more leverage to make the suspension softer. And also one problem with this is when, and this problem also occurs to most other independent suspension systems, the problem is when your wheels need to go over a bump, for example, and then wheels need to go up and down on the shock absorbers. The thing is, the wheels on this one have to slide out, creating extra friction and making the suspension harder to compress. But that can also be fixed with extending the axles. On this. And with this, you can also make a really simple version of a differential by just having a belt like this one pulled in between these two wheels just like this. And now this basically is your differential. Just turn it a bit to dress tension. But this also sort of acts sort of like a locker because the friction on this belt is so high. And then you, if you do this, you also will have to change this bevel gear down to there to get it the wheels to spin the correct directions. And now this is the last suspension system I've made so far. It is my leaf spring suspension as you might know from my other video. So this is basically a little demonstration of how much weight this can hold. As you can see there is a battery pack 
which has six AA batteries in it, and this is the XL motor. Gear down with this combination of gears. See, it is still the locking rear differential with some five centimeter tall Lego tires and wheels. If you actually wanted to see, you may think this suspension system does not have that much suspension travel in it, but actually, it's not actually that hard to compress it. This side of the vehicle barely takes any force to compress at all. Up and down. And see, that's sort of a problem with this uh, leaf spring suspension because I find that the um, axles that make the leaf spring keep falling out of it. But you could always just use a, um, flexible axles to replace these. But then if you're using flexible axles, it would be a lot uh, softer. So then you might need to have two per uh, wheel and then four per axle. That's it for this time. See you on the next video.